David here with Fig Mood on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you one of the recent releases from the luxury brand SD DuPont, which pays homage to the birth of America, called the Declaration of Independence. What I am going to do today is go over the parts and features of this colorful and patriotic pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Coles of London, who are the U.S. distributors for SD DuPont as well as Visconti, for providing this pen on loan for review. Now, this is a very American-themed pen manufactured in France. Uh, France and the U.S. have held close ties when it comes to their histories of our countries, when it, especially when it comes to independence. Uh, they achieved their independence around 25 years after we did, and one of the most iconic images of the United States, the Statue of Liberty, was a gift from France. If you ever have a chance to visit Paris, uh, or if you've watched the movie National Treasure Book of Secrets, uh, which was the sequel, not the original, uh, there is a smaller version of the Statue of Liberty in the Seine River, uh, very close to the Eiffel Tower. Uh, but what you might not know is that scattered around Paris, there are actually five different versions of the statue. Um, I won't go over all the locations, but you could look it up. On a side note, uh, I recently rewatched the two National Treasure movies. Uh, th were they great cinematic masterpieces? No. Uh, but are they fun to watch? Uh, yes. And I wish that the franchise wouldn't have stopped at two films. If you haven't seen them, they're a fun combination of history and puzzles and action. Uh, but enough about that. Let's look at a pen. It arrives in this large box. Um, it has a nice black lacquered finish. On the top, it has the full text of the American Declaration of Independence. It might look a little odd in this picture, but the plaque still has the protective plastic on it. Uh, this pen is on loan, so I didn't want to remove that, even though it's very satisfying to peel those things off. Um, inside, it's lined and padded with some very nice felt, and we have a few things. Uh, there is a use and care guide. Uh, there is a warranty card, um, as well as a box of royal blue cartridges. Uh, there was a converter in here as well, uh, and an additional cartridge arrived in the barrel of the pen. Um, speaking of the pen, it sits on this tray, which has another metal plaque with the limited edition number of this pen, and it's protected by plastic. And then we have the pen. This is the SD DuPont Declaration of Independence. Uh, the pen is based on their Line D model, which I've reviewed previously on this channel in a few different iterations. The pen is made from metal, and it is on the heavy side. It's very top-heavy as well. The cap has a lot of heft to it. The barrel is lacquered, and the cap is silver and red. Uh, the barrel is made from a vibrant blue lacquer. This layered lacquer is applied over an engraved guilloche pattern reminiscent of like bunting that you might see decorating someone's home or a flag proudly waving in the wind. Uh, then on the cap, it's emblazoned with both stars and stripes. Uh, let's take a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it's adorned with the SD DuPont D emblem. Uh, this transitions into the articulating clip. Um, at the top of the clip is a black lacquer-filled shield, which is part of the uh, heraldry of the brand. On the side of the clip, it's engraved with Made in France, as well as the limited edition number of this pen. Uh, this is a limited edition of 176 units, in nod to the year 1776. Uh, something a bit wad was, uh, if you look closely, there was a slight error in the M in made. Um, one of the lines in the M wasn't quite engraved. Um, I didn't notice it until I even saw this picture. Uh, and then I had to re-examine the pen to make sure it wasn't just a quirky picture. Uh, yes, one of the lines is missing. Uh, this is an extremely nitpicky thing, but every SD DuPont pen I have tested has been of the utmost quality. To even see a minuscule error like that was a little bit surprising. Uh, but that's the thing. When a pen company consistently produces a very high quality product, very, very small things like that will stand out. Um, I feel the clip is in uh, size appropriate for this pen. The clip is hinged and can accommodate materials of varying thicknesses very easily. 
Um, the cap is rather bulbous. It reminds me of the cap on a, uh, a Mont Blanc Starwalker. Uh, on the cap, we have a few things going on. Uh, first of all, it's engraved with five stars. And then something that surprised me a bit, the red is not lacquer. It's an inlaid resin, and it's really well done. I examined it with a loop for a while, trying to find the smallest of imperfections or gaps between the material, and I couldn't find any at all. It is impressively constructed. Uh, right next to the clip, it's engraved with 1776, the year the Declaration of Independence was signed. Uh, something interesting, the declaration that you are familiar with was not the first Declaration of Independence. Several of the original 13 colonies had already declared their independence from Great Britain prior to the Big Kahuna document being created. Uh, North Carolina was the first to do so in April of 1776, closely followed by uh, like Virginia, Rhode Island, and New Jersey. These preceding documents were important because they helped establish some of the fundamental concepts of de the democratic government and individual rights. Uh, they also served to kind of rally support uh, to complete independence for our burgeoning country. On a side note, if you ever have a chance to visit the National Archives in Washington, D.C., it's well worth the visit. Uh, it's typically not crowded, and you can see original copies of some of our nation's most important documents. Uh, it is a little sad, though, because the ink on the Declaration of Independence has faded significantly over the years. I believe it was exposed to some harmful light for many years, so good portions of the body text are illegible, and the vast majority of the signatures have faded. Uh, okay, back to the pen. The transition from the cap to the barrel is tapered and smooth. The barrel begins with a band, which on one side has the company name, and on the other side says Paris. Uh, then between those, it has this leaf symbol, which is an indication of the natural Arushi lacquer used in the creation of this barrel. The barrel tapers down at an even rate of decline. Uh, it's difficult to get a picture of it, but if you look at this barrel with a loop, um, you could really make out the faint brush strokes of the Arushi. Uh, that's something that I always like to see. It re really reminds me that this pen wasn't just created by machines, that there was a skilled artisan who spent significant time in the layering of this Arushi and the composing of its final look. Uh, then at the end of the barrel, there is a metal piece with a stamped ring used as a posting mechanism. And this very end is slightly rounded. The cap snaps off. Now, SD DuPont pens have a quality snapping mechanism. Uh, it's fairly loud, and the click is intentional. It's meant to mimic the distinctive sound of opening their luxury lighters, which the company is really well known for as well. Uh, underneath, we have a nib, which is roughly the size of a number five nib. Uh, while part of me wishes it was a number six, the number five actually works a little bit better with the overall aesthetics and lines of this pen. Uh, and as you'll see in the writing sample, the 14 karat gold nib performs very nicely. This nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. And here's a look at the minimal plastic feed. The section begins with the flare and angles up until a small step up to the band and the remainder of the barrel. The section contained 15 V-shaped grooves. I had to count them because I thought it would be nice if there was 13 as a nod to the original 13 U.S. colonies, but no, there are 15. Uh, I'm typically not a fan of metal sections. More often than not, they tend to be rather slippery, but these grooves very much do a good job of preventing this section from being slippery at all. Um, I can maintain a solid grip and don't find myself having to re-grip the pen or adjust my grip because it's sliding around. Um, it's a nice design that looks sharp and it's also functional. This is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges, several of which are included with the pen, and a converter is provided as well. With the abundance of metal in here, eye dropping would not be recommended. The SD DuPont Declaration of Independence is available at a wide number of retailers. This is a luxury pen, and it has a luxury price. The retail price for this pen is just under $1,700, but through authorized dealers, you'll find it for around 20% less, bringing the price down to about $1,350. It is a quality, well-constructed pen with an interesting patriotic theme and provides an outstanding writing experience. 
Thanks again. Go out to Coles of London for providing this pen on loan for review. Now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the SD DuPont Declaration of Independence. Wanted to give you another close up look at these stars and that inlaid resin in here. Uh, and then here is a really good look at the uh, guilloché pattern as well as the lacquer on there. Uh, when you twist it, it really kind of gives some life to the pen. But in regard to some size comparisons, this is what it looks like with a Visconti Homo sapien. Uh, and then here it is with a Sailor King of Pen in Ebonite. And here it is with a uh, Pelican M1000. And in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Mont Blanc 149. Uh, and then here it is with a Visconti Divina. This one was called the Desert Springs. This is one of my favorite materials that Visconti has come out with, and I like this Divina model. Uh, and then here it is with a Fig Boot on Pens Memento Zero from Leonardo. Um, I actually think uh, it would look really nice to have a Davina out of this material. Let me know what you think in the comments, but uh, I think that would look amazing. In regard to uncap comparisons, here it is with the 149 from Mont Blanc and the Homo sapien from Visconti, and here it is with the Pelican M1000. Here we go with the writing sample for the ST DuPont. And this is the Declaration of Independence. Uh, this is a medium 14 karat gold nib. Uh, and the ink that I'm using, appropriately enough, is Farney's American Blue. If you are ever in the D.C. area, it'd be uh, Farney's is a, a really cool store to visit. It's literally only like two blocks away from the White House. So if you're in that area, it's a simple walk to go check it out. But this is what the ink looks like. It's a nice kind of vibrant deep blue. Uh, this is what it looks like with Private Reserve's American Blue. Uh, and then this is Ackerman's Shocking Blue, which is one of my favorites. This is what the ink bottle looks like. Um, a nice wide bottle. Uh, it is 1.5 ounces. You can get just about any nib in there. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. I do find that this nib sings just a little bit. Um, it is a bit of a gusher. You can get some line variation out of there. I pushed it a little too hard there. If you push it a little too much, then it was going to get some railroading. But in regard to the ink flow, I think the ink flow is decent on this pen, as you can see here. In regard to reverse writing, It's a little sharp, but it gets the job done in regard to some fast writing. The feed keeps up just fine. So there we have the SD DuPont Declaration of Independence. Uh, it's a nice, well-constructed, patriotic pen uh, that if you're into this type of motif, that I'd strongly recommend checking out. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.